there is one sense of a unity, and from that unity, all the forms arise. What actually we see on the form today, it is almost like a, a byproduct of a certain intelligence. And from where comes this intelligence? It doesn't belong to this planet, it belongs to the universe. Even on the architectural level, our bodies are reflecting how water forms itself while interacting with other forces. We have a container, we have the edge, and over time this gets more and more consolidated. We solidify, we crystallize. Water brings this cosmic intelligence into the planet. And this is amazing. Because you will start to see actually all these fractures. It's happening on the micro level, but also it's happening on the galactic level. This is fascinating because you feel like, a, wow, you are part of a, one thing that is much bigger than my ideas, what this should be the truth. And this is the game I like to play. That's our possibility to be here lost, not knowing, and try to, to make up something. This is beautiful, I'll never deny that. The mind is formless, but when the mind gets crystallized, then we lose this possibility of uh, adapt into whatever situation. We receive lots of influence from the environment, and that creates, uh, most of the times, lots of conflict, because not necessarily what we are told is in resonance with what it really feels right for us. So we start to actually to get fragmented in our existential condition, in our sense of identity, in our sense of belonging. Now it's traveling. I feel on my spine. Oh, now it's distributed to my shoulder, elbow. And now it is releasing there. Very deep, very low. There is resistance now, you feel it? Whatever reasons it comes out of resistance. But resistance is not willing to experience something. You don't want to go through a certain event. So then you resist. If there is no fear, there is no resistance. And maybe in the beginning of our lives, we are not afraid of anything because we didn't know anything. And also understand actually that the accumulation of traumas, it can generate a storage of fears that it can become very dysfunctional. So we start to actually resist things without even knowing why you resist. So you see like how profound is this approach of resistance in play fight. go to a physical experience when someone is pushing and I stay on the spot, I'm not resisting. Why? Because I actually integrate that external force into my body and inside we exercise ways to recycle and what I mean by recycling is to send all the accumulated tensions down to the ground so that a fresh energy we can start to go up and can use in a situation where you confront each other. Instead of using muscles, actually to create a shield, a wall to stop that force. And then you see, this is your attitude, this is your mind, let's say, no, don't push me. 
So this resistance it creates a physical effect which is contracting muscles. So actually when you contract the muscles in a certain way, this is mirroring a certain mental attitude. What is difficult is to face yourself to that level, to be so honest, so true to yourself, and willing to relinquish all these identities that you have built over time, and now you cling to that. It's not a problem at all, but when it becomes your anchor to navigate through the unknown, this is a problem, because actually for me, the only way to safely navigate through the unknown is to be in a state of mind of not knowing. So not knowing, actually, is a great compass to navigate through this unknown sea we call life. I also must say, had the people in my class that after they came to me, it's like, wow, I never felt so scared in my life. And after that, they went through that and they said it was the best thing it could have happened because it felt real. Play fight, it's not a physical activity, it's a, it's a life practice. There's a moment that, I mean, you can postpone that, but eventually, you know, you have to face it sooner or later. Healing the sense that you find back your integrity, find your, the place where it comes from because it's there. So you don't need to look for outside, it's just look for inside, dive inside your ocean. And to dive in deep waters is scary. And no one can dive there for you. So you have to dive yourself. It can go very deep because there's uh, lots of uh, mirroring through the interactions that you can start to see your patterns, you see yourself, you see your dark side. Instead of just focus outside, why it hurts? When you start to question, being very sincere, very genuine, why I don't like it? It never dies, it truly not, it stays there inside. It's like a music that's always playing. And perhaps when you are very young, like small children, you are able to listen to that song. So the children, they function in accordance to what is coming from inside out. So I think when you start to invite people to play, we are inviting them to go back into that state. something I'm coming out in concept, I just observe and then I try to dance in between. So this is the dance aspect. Let's try to get a feeling of this music inside, to connect this outer music so then maybe outside, inside disappears this boundary. Then, well, then enjoy it. <laughs>